These five unconventional tools will help you make pieces like this. Oil painting is a medium that is really difficult. The blending, the time to dry, and precision are all issues that come with it. But with these tools, you'll be able to get it right the first time. Let's jump into the first one. The paint tube squeezer is one of those unconventional tools that you could use both in the bathroom and in the art studio. Although I recommend cleaning up before, you know, moving it in between. This will save you a ton of time trying to get those last bits of paint out from the tube. To use it, you simply put the almost empty tube into the device, clamp it down, and twist. The machine will move through the tube, squeezing every paint to the front. If you plan on painting a lot, you could say goodbye to sore hands. This nifty gadget will make getting your paints ready a breeze. It's a great idea to always have these ready when your tubes are halfway full to start the squeezing process early. Now that we know about how to get paint on the palette, let's talk about getting it off. Now let's talk about this. Wait, no. It's actually this. The paint palette scraper. Well, this is actually a window scraper, but it does the job. This little guy is a superhero in disguise. If you're coming from an acrylic painting background, you may know how satisfying it is to peel the acrylic paint But with the oils, it's a little different. This just isn't possible, but with this tool, you can glide over your glass palette to pick up even the roughest dry paint. This tool isn't just helpful, it's also super affordable if you're going to the right places. At art stores, these can cost a pretty penny, but I go to my local hardware store and pick them up for around five bucks. It's time for the quiz. Do you know why oil painting sticks are longer than acrylic ones? I'll give you some time to guess. Great, it's because oil paint takes so long to dry that you really can't hold the brush up close to get those fine details. So it's longer so you could hold it back. Comment below if you got that right. If they were short, people would smudge their paintings and get it all over themselves. This is why this tool was made, the mall stick. With this tool, you sort of rest it at the top of your painting or easel or wall and you rest your hand on top of it so you can get really close to the canvas. The old masters use it and you can too. I got this specific one at an art store, but you can easily take an old broom put a rag over it and wrap it with a rubber band or some tape and voila, you have your very own mall stick. Definitely recommend this. Cool, I hope these have been really helpful so far because I got two more that are even better. And if they have been helpful, please be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. I really appreciate it. Our next tool is plastic wrap. This multi-purpose tool is one that I always have in my studio and I love it for oil painting to wrap over my paint after a long day of painting. I won't lie, seeing some paint mountains that some artists have seems satisfying, but I also love keeping my mixed colors for the next day and having them ready to use. So to slow down that drawing process, I take a piece of this plastic wrap, I cut it perfectly to the size of my palette and put it over. I'm making sure to remove all the air pockets between all the small mounds, just so no air is in there. Furthermore, if you're leaving for a longer period of time and you really want to keep them safe, you can put the palette in your freezer to make them dry even slower. Some people also use it for texture. If you're into that, consider scrunching it up into a ball and tapping it or scrubbing it on your piece to, to really get a cool texture on there. Okay, we're at our last tool, folks, and it is good lighting. Now, I know what you're thinking, this isn't a tool, but trust me, I've taken so many classes and this is seldom mentioned. Back when I started oil painting during the pandemic, I did not know anything about lighting and I was so confused as to why my first paintings look so different in photos and at different angles in my studio and the answer was lighting. I have this new really sick lighting rig that helps me mimic natural light here in this basement and it allows me to see the hues and values so much easier. Here's some things to keep in mind when choosing your light, how strong they are. Consider getting soft boxes as they diffuse the light and don't make it so harsh on your canvas. Look what happens to my painting when I get rid of that diffuser. Secondly, consider the temperature. Natural light is somewhere in between warm and cool and generally it doesn't lean one way or another, so make sure your light isn't too red slash yellow or blue. One final thing to consider is the angle at which you place it. Now this is a game changer. In some of my older videos, you can see a harsh light over parts because of the angle, but if you keep it at a far enough distance and consider the height of them, it'll make a world of a difference. All right, here's the comprehensive guide for unusual paint tools in case you missed it. One. The paint tube squeezer will save your fingers and almost empty toothpaste containers. Two, the paint scraper tools allow for satisfying cleanups and for beautiful palettes. Three, mall sticks allow for precision and reduce accidents while painting. Four, plastic wrap can add texture and save your pre-mixed paints. Five, lighting is a game changer and the angles, temperatures, and amount can really make a huge difference to your works. And here they are again. Remember that these tools are for everyone at every stage of their oil painting careers. Adding this to the list of things that you eventually need or want to jerry-rig now is not a bad idea. If you do decide to get one of these, comment down below letting me know if you like or dislike them, or share if you've used them before. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. I respond to every single comment below my videos and on Instagram, so feel free to reach out. And if you made it this far, 
please be sure to smash that subscribe button for more content like this. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.